New information tonight. We are learning new details about an attempted murder-suicide last week. Mobile police confirmed this man, 44-year-old Ulysses Woodard, shot himself after shooting his wife in a church parking lot on Halls Mill Road. NBC 15's Rachel Wilkerson joins us in the studio now with the latest. Rachel? And Corey, we're learning that Woodard's wife was a guest pastor at the True Cornerstone Church in Mobile, delivering the sermon shortly before she was shot. Our speaker, and she was absolutely incredible. Alicia Woodard, whose picture we aren't showing, is recovering tonight after police say her husband, Ulysses Woodard, shot her in this church parking lot. Uh, she still needs a lot of prayer. You know, she's still in some pain, but... Her faith is still strong, so she's still doing good. True Cornerstone Church Pastor Derek Gandy and his wife Kula say after service, Woodard allegedly got into an argument with his wife. Things escalated. They say Woodard pulled out a gun and shot her. By the time we got over here and was over her, she was looking up and she was calling on Jesus. Woodard then took police on a chase before shooting himself and crashing into the church. MPD says it fired a couple of shots back into the car. Yes. Pastor Gandy says Woodard was the pastor at True Word of Deliverance Church of God in Pritchard, and he's shocked by what happened. He says children and other churchgoers witnessed the entire situation and are seeking counseling. A woman accused of shooting her ex-boyfriend and both her parents killing her father. We've learned the father was a well-known pastor in Mobile, Robert Matthews. Charity Matthews pleaded not guilty today in court. Fox News reporter Ariel Mallory joins me now. And Ariel, you spoke with someone breaking or speaking, I should say, on behalf of the Matthews family. Mm -hmm. This has been extremely difficult, they say. Yeah, it really has, Shelby. And family members tell me that's why they can't speak right now, because it is just too difficult. And they describe this whole experience as a living nightmare. And we went by Pastor Matthews' church today, and I'm told he was an outstanding leader, a man of God and husband. And right now, the family is relying on their faith to get through this. Stay strong, and I'm praying for you guys to have peace, and that God gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. And I know that they'll, they'll be okay. These last four days have been unimaginable for the Matthews family after a deadly shooting Sunday night in Mobile. Several MPD officers responded to a home on Avonlea Court shortly before 8 o'clock. They found Robert Matthews dead. His wife, Twanetta Matthews, also shot and rushed to the hospital. Close family friend Siobhan Buchanan says she heard about the shooting on the news and couldn't believe when she found out it was them. When I found out it was the Matthews family, There really are no words, um, something that you would never expect. It's almost like living in a nightmare, you know, um, only because they are such a great family. Hours later, the victim's daughter, Charity Matthews, was arrested and charged with murder, two counts of attempted murder, and reckless endangerment. Police say she also shot towards her brother and shot her ex-boyfriend. All the praises and the honor goes to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha HaKodash. And double honors to the elder apostles and the bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow believers of this truth. Shalom also to your affiliate camps and shalom to you, a few sisters, sincere ones, and shalom to the elect. So, anyway, right, I've seen this video um, about the Alabama, I think it's Alabama, it's quite a few. You're seeing this ramp up now with these uh, pastors, they're starting to shoot their families, right? What they've what they're finding out, right, is their faith in Jesus Christ hasn't worked. Right? Now, the reason why I'm going into this is because Vocab Malone and various other groups who says BHI and Black Hebrew Israelites, a racist cult group, when you look at Christianity, it was built off of racism and an occultic group of white racism, right? And the one thing they told us people, especially so-called blacks, Native Americans, we were always a type of people who had some form of culture, right? Where we had some true belief in the Heavenly Father. Now, we did go off in ancient times because we kept going off. But, you know, to be converted to something this wicked, right, to white Christianity, you know, this is what destroyed us. <clears throat> and these Christians will tell us, the laws are done away with. 
That's why I want to do this video. That's the dangers of it. But when they put an agent out there to do something crazy and then they'll say, see, it's the BHIs. They're dangerous. They're a dangerous cult group. These same Christians don't have the same energy when it comes to the Christian church. Pastors committing all kinds of heinous acts, you know, immoral acts, destructive acts. The daughter shot up every damn body. But you know why, right? Let's go to the reason. Again, another point I want to bring out. Had a neighbor years ago. We talked about the Bible. He said his wife told him to throw out all the laws. <laughs> and then just go to church and believe in Jesus. Okay. Anyway. Um, this is Romans 3 and 20. But now righteousness of God, right? Without the law is manifested. And they will read that and say, see, you don't need laws. This is what they'll say. When the scripture says, uh, for sin is the transgression of the law. But when you bring this out and tell somebody you don't need laws, even in this society has laws, you know, that's a dangerous cult. A cult. We'll keep reading. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Right? The righteousness come into faith in the Messiah. Right? Without the deeds of the law. That's all it's going into. People was practicing the law, but they still didn't have faith. That's why it's called sincerity and truth. You need, you need the law, but you need faith. Right? And mainly you need faith. But when you start practicing, you don't need laws. Then, then it becomes very dangerous. Right? Uh, even the righteous, righteousness of God, which is by the faith in Yahweh. Yep, there we go. The faith in Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah, unto all upon them that believe there is no difference. So, and talking about the Israelites too. So at the end of the day, for upon all upon them that that believe there is no difference the faith in Yahweh but what did Yahweh do did he break laws and then he says pick up your cross your, your affliction and follow after me so if we're supposed to be followers of the Messiah why are we not worried about laws right again we teach and we know that the law can't fully save you we understand that but you must have some law in place some guidance and these people don't have fear they, they don't care they're collecting money they're, they're enticing a the congregation they're collecting checks they don't care man all they say is believe in God and that thing gets old it's the same thing believe in Jesus Christ and lucky you know the woman was spared she was calling on Jesus you know at the end of the day but guess what? Look at all the trauma she got to go through. She's here in life with trauma. Anyway. See, the Lord will keep your ass alive and make you keep believing in Jesus. And then a whole congregation will say, yep, it was Jesus Christ. Anyway. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. This is what they read. So when a pastor do all these heinous acts in these churches like... Um, all the cruel and unusual things that they're doing to the little children and various other things, then they'll bring this scripture out and says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory. <laughs> they all do that. Uh, more excuses to sin. That's what the children of Israel have always done. Right? Sin, make a sacrifice. Sin, make another sacrifice. This is why they go to the club, they gangbang, they uh, smoke and drink and listen to rap music and do all these uh, abominable things and you'll see them cruising, cruising all up in church on Sunday. Anyway, a lot of them just going to die in the casket. They're going to die and be rolled in in the church, right? And they're going to, um, that's how they're going to go out. They're going to have that same spiffy suit laying in the casket in the church. And the Bible says don't even do that. 
that, you know, it's just what it is. Anyway, it says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahweh. So basically what they're saying is the grace. In order to have grace, there must be something in stipulation, something in place to where you need grace. But if you say the law is done away with, then what the hell you need grace for? Right? When you think about it, that to, have, to need grace, there has to be something that you want to do, but you can't do. And you need to be covered. You need to have some form of mercy. But they look at it as grace being, right? He died for us, so now it's just pure grace, so now we don't got to do anything. Yeah. He's the ultimate sacrifice. No, but we still sacrifice. The Lord says, present your body. Paul says, present your bodies as living sacrifices, right? Anyway, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. When you go into propitiation, it, go, it means to bring back, right? In order for the Israelites, this is why we know it's talking about uh, other Israelites. It's not just talking about all nations. Every time you hear the word Greek, you think of another. It's got to be another nation. This is how racism has destroyed us propitiation the action of propitiating uh, uh, or um, appeasing in God's spirited person he lift up an atonement right and an atonement it means reparation to go to repair for the wrong or injury to make an atonement Right, so the the propitiation goes back to the children of Israel to declare the righteousness, right, the remission of sins, right, that are passed through the forbearance of Yahweh, to declare, I say at this time, His righteousness that is might be just and justifier, justifier, of him which believe in Yahweh, right. It says Jesus. That's the point, to believe in the Messiah. See, the whole point is right now, even to, to this day, if you believe in, you claim you believe in the Father, but you don't believe in the Son, you're really like a Gentile. You're really an unbeliever. Because the law can't bring us closer to the Lord. Only the faith in Yahweh can. But what did Yahweh do? The one you call Jesus. He followed the law. And you his blood is shed right um, when they say covered in the blood of Jesus yeah that's what you need you need to be covered for things that you can't keep things that you can't do that's what grace is covering you in, in mercy when you laid on a uh, rent they'll, they'll say look we'll give you five days to pay your rent and you'll get a late fee Right? That's where you get the mercy and grace. Doesn't mean not to pay your rent. You get pulled over and get a parking ticket. Or a warning. Yeah, it doesn't mean don't speed again, man. And this is how these people think. And this is why they get bugged out like they do. And this man was arguing with his wife. But if he knew the scriptures, right? If they both was Israelites and knew the scriptures... Or how a husband's supposed to treat a woman. And how a woman's supposed to uh, obey a husband. But you know what they teach? They teach equality. Right? They teach equality. And that's where we have the problem. Feminism in the church. Let's go to Sirach. 26 and 14. It says a solid and loving woman is a gift from the Lord. And there is nothing so as much as a mind well instructed. A shame faced and faithful woman is double grace. Now in this same these same preachers, they don't believe in the Apocrypha. Sure, we can go into Erasmus and we can go into Martin Luther and how they really couldn't they wasn't very good translators, so they decided to leave it out. He really did translate the Apocrypha. But he decided to leave it out. So there had to be multiple translators to translate it. And then they, when they made it, 
it's and this is why they'll say see it's witchcraft in the uh the apocrypha they wasn't understanding right the, the, every word of the lord is pure right so anyway a shame faithful faithful woman is a double grace there we go and a continent continent mind cannot be valued see if you know how to lead and a woman know how to follow you have no problem and not not going to say that you you're going to have the perfect relationship because paul didn't find one woman of the account in fact the scripture says you shall have trouble in the flesh you're going to have problems but these people aren't even try. they don't have any faith they don't believe in a true messiah right they believe in that white jesus that effeminate white jesus man that told us the laws is all done away with so we're supposed to follow that demon jesus with the horns who doesn't follow laws for instance he didn't eat pork crab or shrimp he didn't eat pork crabs and shrimp and he died and then what now we can eat it because he died he said he came to do the will of the father the will of the father is to bring the children of israel back to the father that didn't mean that oh since i died you know what that's like me being a parent and since I went away, now you can do all that you want to do. You can turn the house upside down. You can throw big parties. Anyway, as the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the order of her house. So we can see in the one clip, I believe the daughter done shot up everybody. And I'm not saying that people can't bug out in any religion. My point is, this is why we go at these Christians because every time something happened in a relationship and one of these women get in a relationship and it goes south, they blame it on being a Hebrew Israelite. Why are you blaming it on that? Why are you blaming it on one particular individual? So they want to blame our so-called, well, so-called religion, our faith. But when we do videos like this on Christians, uh, it was just one crazed person. They fell away from the body of Christ. Nah, this is all Christianity, man. You told them they don't have to follow laws. Right? Um, a shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace and her continent mind cannot be valued. As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. See, these men... He had a woman, one woman, she got to hear raps and, you know, the Christians are learning from us. But, you know, this woman, she, she, uh, you know, the woman which, that was speaking with the head rap, you know, the things that she was saying, oh, she was a good woman and this and that. They don't even know. Everybody's good when they, uh, um, whatever, until they get shot. And then when they get shot or die, then everybody say they was just a good person. Those are all judgments. Then the man shoots himself. The problem is he had no control. He wanted control, but uh, along with feminism in the society, they're pushing that that kind of dogma, that wicked dogma, doctrine, and now the women are taking hold of that, and they're trying to run the show. Right? And they're not happy. And this man got pissed off. He said, nah, you, you, you know, I'm, you're not going to rule over me. Yeah, but you took that 501c3. This is the religion you teach. It says, anyway, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Or works? Nay, but by the law of faith. So Paul here was making examples of how we need the law, but we need faith. This is why James 2 said, faith without works is dead. Right? But the faith is trumps all because it's of Yahweh Shah, the one you call Jesus. That's what you need, faith. And they teach that. The Christians teach it, it's just about faith. But the first commandment is to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength. Right? So you should be calling on the name of the Lord, which some Israelites don't do. You should be trying to keep the holy days to the best of your ability. It ain't going to hurt you to try it. Maybe say my, my commandments aren't grievous. Right? You should be trying to follow the holy days. Right? 
You should not be sinning. You should not be in the mindset that we don't need the law. And when you think like that, that's when the adultery kicks in. You imagine somebody saying, police saying, you know what? All speed limits don't matter. Even though it's still breaking the law, nobody's going to do nothing to you. Ain't nobody going to obey the speed limits. It's the same thing. The same damn thing. Somebody says, um, you're not supposed to sleep with another man's wife. Or, or your, as your wife, you're not supposed to serve authority over him. But then, you hear you here you have a lawlessness, and people are allowing it, and these men are bugging out. They're losing control. Right? Maybe some of them learned it, that they was Israelites, and you can't mix the two. Right? I don't know. Verse thirty one. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Right? Yea, we establish the law. So anyway, I didn't want to make much out of this. I just wanted to show that Christianity and its doctrine has uh, pushed destruction on our people and said we don't have to follow laws. We don't have to fear God. We don't have to fear the Most High. And they may say we, we got to fear the Most High but they don't do anything to show that they fear the Most High. Any examples that they do, they don't show that they fear the Most High. They go into these churches with a big cross, uh, an instrument of cruelty, the same thing that they hung him on, and they worship that. More idol, more idolatry and idol worship. This people, this is why I said, this people speak sweetly with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Right? That's the truth. And they'll say, thank you, Jesus. And everybody say, you're in my prayers. Every time something happens on the news, everybody's, you're in my prayers, my prayers. Nobody's praying for these people, right? Is this another shtick to make people think that people are being religious and that they love you when they don't? Anyway, that's all I have on that, Shalom.